Hey, what's up, everyone? John Sonnen is here from SimpleProgrammer.com. So I've got uh, another interview for for all of you that uh, that like these interviews. This time I've got uh, someone who's who I I've found really interesting. Just looking at what he's done and 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 some of the the controversy he's created with uh, with one of his apps. Uh, his name is Joe Overline, and and he's uh, he's graciously. Uh, agreed to to join me here to to talk about kind of his history as a software developer and what, what he's doing. Uh, and I just thought this was kind of an interesting story. Uh, Joe has actually you know done he he wrote an app called uh, Ugly Meter, and and that that app kind of went kind of crazy in popularity uh, enough to you know get him on Howard Stern show and and uh, multiple times I think right so, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And, and and a whole bunch of other other stuff like that so there, there's kind of it's kind of a cool story I think in just the idea that like sometimes like doing stuff like you know I always talk about on this channel about creating a blog or creating an app or something like that sometimes it's not the direct money that you make from the thing but it's it's the the, the other the other things that happen right the other things that happen in life because you gain the reputation or the popularity or something goes viral so uh, so welcome Joe Hey, great to be here. So, so Joe, I, you know, I, I maybe, maybe you can give you a little bit more of a, of a background of, you know, who you are, you know, what, what you've, what you're, what you're about, what you've done. Uh, sure. The uh, short version of my story, I started software development at an, an early age. It was a, a passion and a true interest and um, got out of it for a while and saw an opportunity when mobile apps started to be an actual thing and was able to jump back into it and uh, and really just take advantage of a new market and um, obviously had some success there and a lot of press and got pretty well known and uh, then took that and leveraged it into uh, Swing Dev is what we've created today which has become one of the uh, the top software development firms, you know, in the Bay Area and across the states. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that that it. I, I really like. It. It's kind of interesting how you like. Uh, you know, one of the things I talk about on, on Simple Program all the time is just like this idea of marketing yourself, building up a brand, and how valuable that is. And I think that's like like you're just a perfect example of it because even though you did something in a different, like I mean, creating it, the app was, was popular. That gave you the reputation that and, and sort of the. Uh, the, the recognition, I think, for for people to know who you are, and that allows you to do a lot of other things. Is it? Am I am I accurate in saying that? Yeah, exactly. And really, um, I mean, there was a, there's a huge aspect of luck here. You know, I can. I mean, you're certainly um, strategically reacting to that luck, or really is what created what what is reality today. But you know, there's there's an aspect of luck there. But really, it was. Um, um, is a really unique situation, a great opportunity that that we're able just to build what we were today off of that. So, to, so let's, let's talk about the uh, the the app, the ug ugly meter. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what 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 gave you the idea from, and, and how does this app work? I, I, it's funny that I, I love how the the the, the headlines are like making making uh, teenagers self esteem mm -hmm. <laughs> or teenagers self esteem for. For years, uh, so so what what gave you the idea to create that that app and what does it do? So well, it was funny. I um, as a developer, when I'm trying to learn new things, the way I like to just jump right into things. So my yeah. approach with with this was this was back you know years back when the first iPhone came out that had a camera, and I had I'm like, well, I need to figure out how to use the iPhone camera. So the way I do everything, I just come up with a little mini project and I. I come up yeah. with an idea, and I was like, you know what? This is just the ugly meter. Let's let's do this. It's just silly, you know. It's it's fun, and it was never intended to be like a marketable project. It was like right. it was just something I was doing, and I threw in the app store, and and then it kind of took on a life of its own after that. Uh, I just woke up one morning, and essentially, my world changed. Wow. Okay. And and so if I if I understand, I I tried it out briefly, but but uh, but basically it it 
so you're taking a picture of the face and then you're using like the the golden ratio or are you actually using the golden ratio to to figure it out like the the real because there's like these um you know there, there's an actual kind of if i understand correctly there's like mm -hmm. a scientific kind of how they figure out facial beauty and it's based on like the rate the golden ratio like how how far apart are your eyes and how big is your nose and the ratio of your chin to your lip and ear to the eye i don't know there's a whole bunch of are you using all those calculations in there or is it more of a fun yeah so you you've got it exactly right so we actually have two versions we have ugly meter which was the original version which is essentially just for fun and then we created it took another year and a half of development was the ugly meter pro which actually measures facial points using the, the actual science behind it and um and that was a that was a really interesting path to go on i just learned so much in that area and um, the research is, is really interesting. So we got to learn about all those things, implement it in our way, and uh, people really embraced it. Oh, interesting. So so if I understand correctly, the first version, the non-pro version, doesn't use the, the rigor. It, it's, right. it's, it's more of a novelty. Right. The, the science is in the pro version. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, so you came up with the the idea, and then once it gained gained traction, you're like, oh, I, we could actually make this actually work, really right. work. <laughs> that's pretty much what it was. Because I never was intending on on selling the, you know, if I was, yeah. I might have taken a different approach. But I was like, well, but it was neat because I was like, you know what? People are really interested in this, and I know it's possible, and I know that the technology is there to right. to do. It's it's all just math, right? And um, as engineers, that's the easiest thing for us to implement and figure out. So um, when I realized the market really had an interest in this, um, that's when I kind of went down the path of like, let's let's figure this out for real. That that's such a great idea. I think a lot of people they they try and like hit a home run on their on the first thing. Like especially a lot of software developers I talk to that are getting started in the field. What they want to do is they want to like come up with this huge, humongous, like the ultimate app that they they have this great idea, and so they don't really test anything out like it's like if you can just throw something out there that doesn't doesn't really work or just like an mvp just something small and then see if you get the traction that takes you like a, a tenth of the time or less uh, I, I think more more developers should should do something like that and then it's like and then you're able to go and say oh well, obviously if the people are so interested in this then if i create a version that actually implements the algorithms that will do well as well so right and that that's what we try to you know we have current clients a lot of startups and uh you know, it work with everything from like just guys with an idea up to like we have partnerships with all the VCs in the Bay Area and they refer us to their portfolio companies. So um, what we really try to instill in them is the importance of doing testing ideas like because yeah. even if you know everything in the world about your idea and what you're going to create, the reality is as soon as that idea is out there, the market, the people, your customers, they will tell you what they want. They'll tell you the features that are important. And the one thing I've learned is 100% of the time, it's never what you thought it would be. So it's, we really, it seems counterproductive as far as our business, but in the beginning when we're working with clients, most of the time we're trying to talk to them into scaling back, spend less money so they can get a concept out and they can then have a budget to react to you know, the, the market and what they really, really want. Yeah, yeah, and that, that yeah, that that makes a lot, a lot, of, a lot of sense. Rather than spending all the money up front, it's it's funny. I, I've talked to some people that have done like businesses where you would, they would launch something, and you would think that it was an automated process. Like you know, let's say you came up with some business that's like it will automatically evaluate you punch in your insurance and it'll it'll tell you like where you're lacking coverage and what and maybe they have just someone manually doing that <laughs> behind the mm -hmm. scenes and you know and then it's like they haven't invested a lot but if if that takes off then they can create the technology and the software or they think software developers want to jump into the software right away and that's not always the best thing yeah and it kind of depends if you're doing it for yourself or for a client too, because one of the things, I mean, I take the same approach with my own things that I do with clients, but a lot of times developers doing their own projects, you know, their motivation is not to make money and that, um, and our, our motivation in anything is never to make money because that's, that's the wrong way, you know, that's the wrong way to go after anything. It's, it's about creating success. So, um, but so in that case, the, Software developers, if they're doing their own like pet projects, a lot of times 
they do go way overboard on it just because it's a passion. It's what they do. It's their hobby anyway. So they're right. like, cre they're, there's more an, an artistry behind it. You know, they're creating something. So, um, but it, it, when it comes to clients, we are really mindful of um, just creating a plan and creating something that can be executed for success to get them to the next phase. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so let, let's talk a little bit about, so how many, uh, how many apps did you create? Like, how 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 did the stars align with the with the the ugly meter? Did it? Did you create a bunch of applications and then this one took off? Did you create ugly meter and then create a bunch of applications afterwards? Was this just like the one thing you created and then it just it just took off? What what was the kind of the field of luck there? Well, it's it's a little bit of both. So we we did create apps early. I created one like maybe. A dozen apps before and a, you know a dozen after maybe but um, really once that app hit it was it was an interesting point for me because um, that app hit and had great success and obviously a decent amount of money follows that success and it really made me evaluate like you know what um, this is a real thing this is a real business with opportunity right. so and we were I, I think we really leveraged that to the maximum to get to milk it for everything it was worth and then it was kind of a decision like what what do i really want to do and that answer became i uh, like the success of this was so exciting for me and it was so driving i want to help other people have that success take right. what i've learned take what i know and create success with other people because i've already had it so like you know like let's do something that truly interests me so um that's kind of where this new this new venture came out and with swing dev we the approach from day one is uncompromised quality. We're not a chop shop. We are here to do great things, make people succeed 100% of the time, have unique challenges. We employ some of the best engineers in the world. It's, yeah. it's impossibly hard to get through our interviews. I certainly wouldn't even pass our interviews myself. Um, but uh, so it, it's kind of created a culture of just getting these brilliant minds and creating an environment where they can help people succeed and, and solve problems in their own way. We, we don't try to drive how they think. We give them the problem, we give them the goal, and we let them find their own path. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. That's, uh, that, that's uh, refreshing to, to hear, hear that, that way of approaching software development, you know, especially, especially a lot of agencies. I think today there's a lot of agencies where it's really just like the numbers and it's not, you know, and, and what, ultimately I, every time I talk with someone that's like thinking about starting an agency because they're a freelancer, I, I talk about like, well, yeah, this is what happens. Agencies, they, they grow up, you know, like five developers, 10, 15, pretty soon there's 20 and then they lose their big client and then they can't make payroll and that's, every, you know, <laughs> every, <laughs> and it's yep. because they're just focused on that and as opposed to like building the, the quality and building a reputation. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. Yeah. I mean, I firmly believe that chasing um, a venture business just to make money off of it, like it is your success, if you have any at all, will be very temporary. Like what we build, we build long term, work with great clients, make yeah. them successful, and, um, and and that's what works. I mean, the reality, we, we are certainly not the cheapest dev house out there, but we, we are the best. And um, that's why we're recommended when a VC, Fun, like the, the biggest compliment we get in the world is a VC gives their money to a portfolio company. A new portfolio, say they get the Series A, they give them several million dollars, and one of the first things they do is introduce that CEO, say, listen, if these guys, Swing Dev, they are trusted. These guys will help you deliver, and they'll help you do a great thing. So essentially, they are putting us in a position where they're trusting us with their money and like um to us that's the biggest compliment in the world because the uh, um that's the, that's the they're in the money business and to pass that trust on like really means a lot to us so it really encourages us to um, always deliver 100 percent of the time and really create just a great process and great experience for everyone we work with right yeah that's that's an awesome place to be. It uh, sort of the way that you described it sort of reminded me of how 
a, a lot of times VCs will not fund the idea, but they'll fund the person. And it, it's kind of, I think, a, a similar thing is it, it's almost like you're <laughs> like the, the chance of success just increased a lot more if, you know, software being a, a huge component of the success, if that's something that you can nail down and you know that you're going to get a good result there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, uh, you know, one thing I wanted to talk about with the, with the ugly meter is because I know that you've, you've probably, you must have faced this. Well, especially, you know, things like, you know, Howard Stern and, and uh, so there's, there's obviously a lot of backlash, right? I mean, if you look at the ugly meter ratings in the app store, it's no, <laughs> I wonder why I people don't, I don't, to be <laughs> honest, I don't want to see. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, oh, this stupid app says I'm ugly. Well, fuck that. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a love, there's love and there's hate. There's no in between in, in this world here on that. Exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. So, so you've created a very polarizing thing. It's not very politically correct, right? I mean, it it's not right to tell people that they're ugly. Like, you know, uh, how how did you deal? You, you, you know, from from the the interviews I read with you, where, where you talked about stuff, it, it seemed like like you're very. I don't want to say cavalier, but but like, it doesn't seem like political correctness is something that holds you back or stops you. Like, uh, how how did you deal with that? And what's kind of your your philosophy and, and thoughts on on that? Well, it helps being an ugly person, so no one can accuse me of. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you know, I it was interesting because when the when the press on this first took off, it was very positive, um, and um, they were doing it was for fun, right? And then what happened? It was interesting because Daily Mail in the UK was the first that picked it up, and they did celebrity coverage, um, like, oh, here's the stars, here's how they're rated. It was just fun. It was, it was a good article. And then it really quickly went stateside and the news stations here were picking it up, you know, CNN, um, all these stations did it. But what happened is Fox News then, they were kind of late to come to the game. They decided that they wanted to run the story because it was, it was big, but they wanted like an angle. So they completely yeah. fabric. I learned a lot about the news and the press and this whole thing. Um, they completely fabricated a story on how it's being used as a tool for bullies completely made up. Um, and, um, I, it was funny because they, I was actually ambushed by them. They, uh, they actually called me into the studio and they're like, Oh yeah, great. We love it. We want to, I mean, we just talk to you about your success, blah, blah, blah. And I sit down and five seconds later, they're like, how do you feel that you created the tool that's you, being used to bully children? And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so I mean, thankfully I could think fast and, you know, I'm yeah. just like, and I knew it was total crap. They were making it up. But um, so that, that's why I could embrace it. I'm like, listen, if I really thought that I was causing harm to children, it's a different story. But the reality is we weren't, it was, it's, it's a fun thing. It was a joke. And um, there was not one reported case anywhere of th this causing any problems in any school. But the thing is, once they said that, then uh, that's when things really yeah, erupted. Echo chamber. Yeah. The the news stations love controversy, and yeah. things went crazy. I went on. Uh, you know, we saw it. Went to CNN live. I mean, we like did so many things. I did hundreds of radio morning shows, and um, it was. It was it's just crazy. It was just everywhere. We were uh, sitting watching Jay Leno one night, and Jay Leno does it in his monologue. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? The world has gone crazy. Um, yeah. So it was really exciting. But um, really, being politically correct about the whole thing, because I, I knew all the negative press was completely fabricated, made it a lot easier. Um, it wasn't, it, there were no true issues with this app. Um, and I even had discussions with like Apple and things like that too, because they knew they, they were, you know, cause it was that people were petitioning Apple to pull the app and oh this and God. that. And, um, so we, I, I had discussions with them too, and they were on the same page. They understood. They're like, yeah, we get it. You know, it's, it's the press. So, um, thankfully they, um, not that they endorse that app, of course, but you know, they, they do stand up for their developers in the right situations yeah yeah that makes sense yeah that's that it's kind of funny just the, the way that 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 gets over and it's funny too i think that's funny that that fox was the one that took that angle as opposed to like you would expect the more liberal uh media outlets to take that angle and fox to take the more the, the other angle but i mean they were just late to the game and they needed a yeah. story so they created one <laughs> like that was yeah. pr pretty much it
that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. It, it, but it's good. It, it also goes to show like it, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think, you know, one thing I discovered on YouTube here was that my popular, like my channel grew and started becoming more popular when I was willing to polarize, when I was willing to be a little bit, contra not, not creating controversy for the sake of controversy, but some of the subjects I talk about, you know, are, are, not politically correct and that's that actually helped i'd rather like it's i think a lot of people they they aim for like the you know the thing that's not going to offend anyone that's going to be kind of you know just like and, and that's that's it's never news it's never popular it's never right. a story. it's not like, interesting you know yeah mm -hmm. so uh so tell me about the the howard stern thing this is this is interesting what was that like and that's i mean there, there's a polarizing guy for you right there right i mean he's he's, he's the perfect example right Exactly. Um, that was that was amazing. So I I was a huge fan of Howard. Like growing up, listen literally every day. You know, I mean, the show's like four or five hours long. So like listening every day is a huge part of your life. I, I loved the show. As you know, I was in high school. It was cool, and um, I, I knew everyone on the show. And when I heard from, I actually ended up being on there four times. And they, wow. yeah, and then when they reached out about it, I was like, <laughs> I was like, drop everything. This is what we're doing. Like, this is cool. So we went in and, you know, it was a big, con it just, um, it was just a blast. It, I was sitting in the studio, we're scanning the staff. It was just, it was so much fun. And I remember, um, and they, it was, they even were doing follow-ups. They did a Howard TV episode about it. It, it was crazy. Oh, wow. But I remember just sitting there. There was one moment I was sitting there in the studio, and our whole bit was kind of up. I was in there like it was supposed to last five minutes. It lasted like an hour and a half. And um, I was sitting in the studio on the couch, and then like the show kind of just went on. And it was I was just sitting there, and it was like the surreal moment. I'm like I'm sitting here. Howard Stern is ten feet over here. Robin is like six feet over here, and the show's just going on. I'm like just sitting here watching the show. They didn't, they didn't kick me out. They, 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 I think they just, you know, we had fun. It was a good bit. So they kind of just let me sit in there and I, I was just sitting there watching the show live. And, um, it was like unbelievable for me. It was like such a great experience. And then the, the break came and, you know, I got to go sit and talk to all these people and they, they were even thanking me. They're like, Oh, that was great. That was just a great. <laughs> and, and then, and then they replayed our, um, so two of my times that were on there at the end, of, it was so cool because at the end of the year, they played their top 10 episodes of the year and two of the top 10 episodes were my episodes. So oh, wow. like, I mean, for, since I followed him for so long, it was just such an amazing, unique experience. It was something you could never buy. Like of, yeah. Of everything that happened uh, to me, that was that was just the most exciting moment by far. Wow! Yeah, that that's got to be it, it. It's such a weird thing when you like something that you've watched, or you know, and, and suddenly you're part of that that thing. And it it kind of, but I think it's it's so interesting. Like, it seems so far away from us when we're you you know, but but it's really not that far. Like like all those things are like. That, that I think you, you think about that it just seems like oh this because I remember when I like when I was you know not 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 quite the scale of, of, of Howard Stern show but I when I was a younger software developer I used to read MSDN magazine and I and I'd read the articles that, you know these 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 they were celebrities to me as a software developer right you know yeah. and, and then and then I be I would I became one of them like I became you know and it was like wow like I like I had placed these people so high they wrote books and stuff and and then and then and now I've got a book and now I've you know written articles and and and, and built this but um it, it's just it's, such a surreal experience like it's it's really for the taking I mean it's out there you can yeah. you can do it and like these these things are not unachievable they just if you're if you're willing to go after and chase them, like it, it's completely possible. Now, what would you say? See, a lot of people, I mean, you use the word luck too. And I think a lot of people, they like to dismiss, like they like to say, well, 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 you know, it's, it's lucky. Like they, or they say, you need to read Malcolm Gladwell's books on outliers. And, and I'm like, I hate that book. But <laughs> but, but I, my, my response is always like, well, you know, like, like, like take someone like you. I think if you didn't create, I mean, this is just my opinion, but... I, I believe like someone like you, if you didn't create ugly meter, you would have created something else. And you, I mean, you would have eventually hit that, that home run. Maybe it wouldn't have, the ball wouldn't have gone as far, 
but like someone who's constantly up at bat they're they're eventually going to get you know connect with luck and that's that's this i mean that's what we can control as, as human beings but I, I think it at least my opinion i i don't i really hate it when people like try to like say oh well the, you got to be lucky or you got to be a white male or you know so anything that's that sort of like makes it it's something that that not everyone could achieve if they're willing to to put in the the work. What's your kind of yeah. take on that? Having well, certainly there's an aspect of luck, but I mean, luck can be created too, and you can set yourself up for the best possibility of having that luck. The people that just sit around and do nothing and just wait for their lottery ticket to come, of course, it never comes. And those are the people who just you know just. Oh yeah, those are the ones that dismiss it. Well, yeah, he got lucky. I didn't. And the reality, there's a lot of hard work and many years of work behind creating that luck. It just, it just didn't happen one day. And then there's the next step is once you get that little chance, you get that little piece of luck. It's about leveraging that to yeah. maximize what it can be. And that's where your true success comes because that's the difference between, you know, that was clearly the difference with ugly meter between thousands and millions of downloads was leveraging the opportunity, running with it, um, like not trying to be politically correct, just being right. open and honest, just, just going for it and not looking back. That's, that's what you have to do. And I mean, sure, um, I, I think I had a good chance at it. Just I, again, I do things over and over. I haven't had an actual like real job since I was 19. I, I've started multiple businesses and um, that's, I, I love to do it. It's my personality. And, um, so yeah, there, there is luck, but there, but you need to do your part to create that luck. Yeah. I, I really like what you said about like maximizing it once you get, I think there's a lot of people that they complain about the luck and they've had actually the opportunity and they just didn't see it for what it was. And so they didn't actually milk it or, or maximize that, you know, for, in my own story, I had done, I'd gotten lucky uh, with with plural side the, the the training company to be one of the first authors there and there was a lot of other authors that had it but I ended up creating 55 courses because I busted my ass for several years like I was like I want to be the number one author on this platform and that led to millions of dollars of royalties which like but there were other people that had that same exact opportunity they just didn't do the work and it's and I think there's so many of those people don't even recognize when they're in that they're already gotten lucky <laughs> mm -hmm. and then now comes the hard work it's like it's like what you said the hard work before the luck then the luck and then even more hard work you know you take like there i think there's a lot of people i've, I've interviewed people that have had number one apps in the app store and they didn't do the kind of media stuff. They didn't like press the the luck that they had and and so it didn't it didn't go as far as as, as yours did yeah, and that's the mistake people make too. Is like if you have the chance, you have to put everything in. It's it's if it's not easy, and there's so yeah. much. I mean, you know this. You're building something. There's so much sweat involved. You, it's day and night. It is it is your entire life. And if you're not willing to put that effort into it, you know, it, someone else is, and they're the ones that are going to beat you in that competition. Oh, yeah. And they're the ones that are going to be successful. You have to be willing to put everything in it. And I, yeah, and I think you you see that story too a lot. I think with with immigrants to to America, like sometimes you're like, well, why is it so? Why is it these people that came over with fifty dollars in their pocket, you know, and and uh, and, and you just landed in New York City and didn't know anyone? Why did a lot of times they those you hear those stories and they become millionaires and it's like it's because they they put everything into it. like they the same luck that every that other people had they recognize it for that and like busted ass whereas i think mm -hmm. it's so easy to take that stuff for granted yeah and they're hungry for it i mean you can be driven yeah. by you know necessity or you can just be driven by passion there's a lot of ways you can be driven but you have to be driven like it just it doesn't just magically fall in your lap yeah 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 it's, yeah it, it, I, I always talk about this idea that everyone thinks that someday they're going to be a rock star or someday they're going to be a millionaire or something like they're just waiting for it because they just assume that someday they're going to be a famous actor or someday you know that, that, that there it'll come but there's nothing it's not going to come you're just going to get old <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. uh, unless, you're, unless you're doing something now, uh, you, you don't have to give, you know, obviously, you know, exact numbers or anything, but I'm just, just out of curiosity, again, you can, you can bypass the question if, if you want to, how, because I've, I've talked, I've interviewed some people that have actually had number one apps in the, in the Apple app store, and, and we kind of got some ideas on, on numbers, but, um, 
if you're comfortable at all or whatever level you're comfortable uh, talking about the, the money, how much money does someone make when they get a number one app in the app store? And it, go, I mean, yours was there for a, a long period of time, right? Yeah, and keep in mind though, back in the day, um, back in the day, there were a lot less users and a lot less app store revenue. So these days, you know, the number one apps and the gaming, the gaming area is what drives a lot of the money now. Was uh, between they're making between one and two million dollars a day. Um, the back then when we held number one, and we were number one in uh, ninety four countries, I believe it was. I mean, we were it took over globally. Um, but e even back then, I think our best, our best day was, I believe $270,000. Wow. That's, um, so that's not that's a bad, good. not a bad day's work, but it was always fun to wake up the next morning and like, look at the numbers. Like cause yeah. you'd check and you're just like, I mean, making money while you're sleep while you're sleeping is like the greatest feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. So they, um, yeah, that was, uh, um, so th that was, a, I think our best day. It, it's almost hard to remember. It was just such m madness back then, but those, the, basically that was our, those are our Howard Stern days. Those were our best days by far because not only was there a huge audience, but it was, it was the target audience for that type of app. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it just it makes sense to. You. I mean, just just as we're talking, right? I, how many people? I bet five hundred people downloaded the app while we're having this conversation. I, I mean, w when they watch this, because they're like, "Well, I got to check that out." It, it's just yeah. something that when you hear it, you're like, "Well, shit, I get." It, it, it's yeah. so good because it hits on that like self esteem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, totally. Uh, we it was it kept it had momentum too. It was crazy because we were. I don't remember the exact timeline. I'd have to look, but we were actually number one in China for like, I mean, it was months. <laughs> like it wasn't like, it wasn't, we, we just like kept that position. And yeah. um, we, one of the things we, again, when we talk about leveraging the opportunity, one of the um, things that I did immediately was to localize it in uh, oh. all the other languages. So, yeah. you know, we had, five languages or something that we did immediately and Chinese was one of them. So, and this was still early app store days. Like people weren't localizing for the Chinese app store. They, you know, they didn't care. They were constant. The U S market was enough. So for us to cater to that audience, um, they really embraced it. So, um, it, we, we really held strong there for a long time. Right. Yeah. That, that, that that's a good idea. That, that makes a lot of sense. That's, that's funny. So, um, so, so here's here's one other thing I was wondering too about this because I think this is one of, one of the things that I think uh, you know I, I think a lot of people that that end up having success end up having to face because a lot of times it's not necessarily the thing. Well, and, and maybe this way, but you know, you know, I, I think from what you've described, I, I'm I'm guessing that this is probably the case, but. Uh, this was probably not the thing that you were most proud of ever creating in your life, right? You probably had something that you built a different app or something else that you're like, this is so good. And then you put it out into the world and everyone says no, <laughs> but then you create <laughs> yeah. the silly thing, right? You know, I've done this with blog posts or videos or something like this is the shittiest, stupidest thing. And then everyone just goes crazy about that. And I think there's this, like, this temptation when that happens to like, to, to like resent that and almost be like, oh, I'm not going to put effort in Like you need to see my beautiful thing, but you went with the flow. Did, was that a, a thing? Like, was that a struggle for you? Like, you know, as a, as a creator, like to, to feel, <laughs> you know, yeah, your, your really. child is, is getting the attention, whereas this beautiful one is not, you know? Yeah. Um, it's funny you mentioned that because one of the, the things we did, and this was after, uh, we spent a year, a year and a half creating a game. And um, uh, anyone who's ever been in gaming knows the effort involved is, is huge. You have to really want to do it. And I had two other partners, and we were doing it together. And um, it was called Monsters Invade Oz. It was like a Pokemon-style game for... Yeah. Um, but uh, and it was so much fun to make, and it was everything about it was amazing. The the artwork we had we had custom music made. I mean, it was just it was fun. Um, and we then we had everything going for us too. We let it we let it out at GDC, you know, the Game Developers Conference. We won Best in Play. Oh, wow. um, 
Apple featured it as their featured app. Um, we got tons of press. There's everything, and um, nobody spent money in the game. Um, it was it was a free game with in app purchases. We structured in app purchases. It was a, it was when in app purchases first started, and um, everyone was kind of learning the best way to do it. We structured it in a in like a not great way, and we I mean while we had tens of thousands of downloads immediately the first week, we like pretty much literally had no money spent. I mean like two hundred dollars. Oh um, wow! And yeah. we had again. This is. You know, when you, when you talk about luck, I mean, we, we had everything going for us there, too. And, you know, yeah, sure, we were featured by Apple, all these things. But, again, those you, you, people can look at that and think that it's luck. But the reality is we got out there. We did trade. We did these, you know, gaming shows to get the word out there. And we met people from Apple there. We, um, they featured us because we made a quality product and we put in the effort to get in front of them where people blindly – behind the scenes, be like, oh, Apple featured them. Of course, they're, they're lucky. They're successful. It's like, <laughs> no, we, we did a lot. We spent money. We, there was sweat. We did a lot to, um, to create that luck. It's, it's not all magic. Yeah, yeah, that 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 makes it, and even with that, it's it's still, you, you still you know couldn't get the try. It's it's funny, like you know, not not that I mean, but, but obviously there was something wrong either with the structure or with or just with the, the the environment at the time with with people. But like it's it's like marketing is a multiplier for for a thing, and so like I think a lot of people are like, well, if I could just get on CNN, right? But here you were on the Howard Stern show, and you had all this. I mean, you had a ton of marketing engine for you, but it still doesn't doesn't. Make make the thing success. I mean, to some degree, like we don't know, like we, we just can't know, you know, as an entrepreneur, that's, that's the one thing. It's like you work on something for a year and you put it out there and hopefully, but you can't, there's not, you can't, you can never guarantee success. I guess that's where right. I'm right. And there's at. success and there's failures. And as long as you're learning from your failures, you can do better the next time. That's, um, that's a core, a, a core thing we actually instill in our team now because we have extremely smart people and yeah. we don't want to hold them back. When they're solving a problem, we tell them, we tell them like, listen, you you can make mistakes. It's not bad if you're not pushing your limits. If you're if you're not making mistakes, then you're not pushing your limits. And we want them to make mistakes as long as they're learning. If if someone's making the same mistakes over and over, more than once, that becomes a problem. But right. we actually encourage mistakes because that means you're 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 really pushing what you can do. And if you know, and that's what we rely on in our business now is if we're going to be innovative, we're going to stay at the top, we're going to come up with the solutions that nobody else can come up with means we have to innovate and we have to push forward as much as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I always, I create the you know, trust the process. Yeah, a, yeah. It's like you, you, you know, so many people focus on that short term result and it's like, yeah, that'll prevent you from having problem. Like, 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 but, but ultimately if you just know that if you do the best job and you're willing to take the risk and you're willing to make the mistakes, like you said, and, and have the failures and learn from them, that's the process. If you trust that you're ultimately going to get the better, the, the, the results will come. But but people focus so much on that on that result, the short term results. So that's such a bad focus. Yeah, exactly. That's you're setting yourself up for failure. There, we everything we approach with any project or client or anything, it's it's all about long term. We have to all have our eyes far ahead. Being short short term thinking on anything or being opportunistic or anything like that is, um, you know, it's it, to me it's just shallow and it's not the way to actually be successful. Yeah. Well, cool. Let me um, let me give you a chance. Let, let's talk a little bit. Uh, maybe if you can tell uh, you know uh, anyone that that's watching or listening, what uh, I guess for developers that are interested, it looks like you're hiring. It looks like you're always hiring good good people. Uh, wh where can they go, and what kind of people are you looking for at at Swing? So we um, we hire engineer. We have our main engineering office in Warsaw, Poland. Um, we have our offices in the Bay Area too, which we run project management out of, and we also have a third office in Cape Town. And, and um, our core team is in Warsaw. Um, we are we're always looking for um, people who just really 
really think in a unique way um, are extremely smart, really at the top of their game. Yeah. Um, but not only that is they have to be, you know, they have to have a mindset that they want to move forward and, and learn more. We, we require that our team members like have like a path to expand their skills. We, we do everything we can as a company to improve them, make them smarter and do all these things. And yeah, that may mean they would go, they'll get better and go somewhere else. But the reality is we create an environment that, um, that they love and yes. we keep people because um, it's it's unique there. The type of we, we brought a lot of the Bay Area culture to Poland, so it's it's a very unique operation out there. We do things different than any well, anyone else does it, and um, it's it's been really successful. They um, are great developers, get to work with great clients, and it's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, I, I think a, a lot of people in in uh, my audience here from Poland will be excited because normally I it's always like U.S. opportunities, so there's going to be I mm -hmm. expect some emails. <laughs> yeah, no, we love to hear from you know we we love to hear from people that um, that most people that we end up hiring come to us. We don't really do any outbound looking. We yeah we do a lot of um, you know a lot of community type things over there to. Um, just help the developer community. Um, just like this month is security month, so we're doing talk. We have a big loft in in downtown Warsaw. We do community talks there on security. We did machine learning last month, so um, we create a lot of opportunities for um, de developers to learn more and expand their skills. And when people think they're at our ca when they're at our caliber of what we expect. Um, they, you know, they, they come to us and, and, and then it, fe it feels right. You know, you, you, you yeah. know, and, but we're always, we always want to talk to people, expand our network and, um, getting through the door is tough, but, um, but it's worth it once you get there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that we're, makes we're, we're a big family too. Like our, our group, yeah. we're very, very close. Well, I like what you said too. I think a lot of companies are very focused on, like they don't want to train people and have them leave. And it's like it's like your it's almost like your job is to make someone so good that they that they can move on and go. Like it's like you'd rather have someone that's got the ambition and is like that it only sticks with you for two or three years that has that drive and the hunger than someone who's like you know is looking for a lifer type of position and doesn't really care. Like it's better to have like that that bright light burning for a short period of time. I mean, maybe they stay with you forever, but like that, that's the, I feel like it's, it's one of those things like you can't go wrong. Like if you're willing to help people and make them better, like at the very least, it's going to make your reputation such that people want to come and work for you. So you're getting better developers, even if you have some that leave. But I think so many companies are so scared that people are going to leave that they, they limit the, they don't want to make them better. They want to keep them, you know, which is such a, uh, it's such a it's it's that it's that mindset again that that short term that risk mindset that mm -hmm. the you know the instead of seeing the world as as a opportunity they, they see it as as a risk yeah and you can't the thing is you um you almost have to just have the you know blindness to move forward and you don't you can't think of those things because you know the reality is we create an environment that people don't want to leave and nobody ever leaves um yeah. and not because not because they're stuck with us, because they want to be with us. We treat people right. We bring them unique challenges, and um, we create we create something that they can't find anywhere else, and they don't want to. They just they're just happy. So we actually um, we actually don't have people leave ever. Which is, but you know what? If they, I'm very close. Some of my best friends are over there, and if they had an opportunity that was better or something that fit them, I would. 100% be behind it and encourage them, you know, yeah. that they they brought themselves to the to the level of something I don't know what it would be, but they found something that's better, you know, we we're completely supportive of that, but um until then we just we just make sure to treat people right and take care of them. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, I agree with that. That's the best policy. All right, Joe, well, uh is there anything else that you want to uh promote or like anywhere that you want to point people uh before we wrap this up? Um, not, not really. If, um, one thing I wanted to say, if anyone has any questions, comments or whatever, you feel free. I'm always, 
I'm always willing to talk to people and meet new people. You can email me directly. Um, my email address is just Joe, just J O at swingdev.io. And um, if, if you have anything to say, feel free to shoot me an email and we can talk or any, if you have uh, if you're interested in our team or joining the team, you know, that's great. If you have a project that you need help with or know something like r really anything we're we're always uh, willing to talk to anyone in the community. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that, Joe. I think I think you, you'll probably have a lot of people take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds that, good. That offer. That's cool. Yeah, I appreciate you, you taking the time. I think this is a really you've got really an interesting story, really valuable, uh, some some valuable wisdom here for for those that are, that are listening. So uh, appreciate it, and uh, I hope to stay in touch. And uh, if I can ever do anything for you, just let me know. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was a it was a great conversation. All right. Take care, Joe. Bye.